Way back in 1977, a South Melbourne player thrilled the football world and won the Brownlow medal. He joins us tonight. Please welcome Graham Teasdale. <laughs> Graham, great to have you back. Thank you very much. It's fabulous to be back. You're all looking a million dollars. Yep. Ronnie Someone. especially. <laughs> it's been 18 months since I was on last time. He's got the Backstreet Boys haircut. <laughs> thrown away the Grecian and he's really come up a tree. All I need, Graham, is your metallic suit and I'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> Gray, let's talk about your fabulous career that you had and we spoke about you winning the Brownlow medal. But taking the Brownlow medal out of the equation, what was your most proudest moment about your football career? That good. This one is a uh, yeah. This one is uh, probably something a little bit different that a lot of people wouldn't expect. I played uh, in a Richmond Seconds game out at uh, Footscray, which was in those days you had under 19s and, and uh, reserves, and the under 19s had to win the last game of the season to get into the finals, and Footscray were top of the ladder, hadn't lost a game, so they asked me would I play in the under 19? So I've gone and played in the reserves, jumped in the car, raced back and kicked 10 goals. Oh, and uh, we won. <laughs> it was the only time I was ever carried off the field on somebody's shoulders. So, yeah, I, even though it was an under 19s game, I was pretty proud of that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, look, Graham, thanks for coming on the show. It's always good to catch up with you. You obviously went uh, from Richmond to South. Was there a trade there and what type of uh, there was, player? What there, type was, of uh, there was. Richmond named it as their, their worst trade of the century. And in the t <laughs> at the time, they, uh, they, they were getting rid of a bloke with a dodgy knee, being me. Uh, a bloke who was blind in Francis Jackson and just an outright troublemaker in the <laughs> whale. And the whale came fourth in the Brownlow the following year. Francis Jackson uh, found that contact lenses meant that he could actually see the ball. <laughs> and, uh, of course, two years later, I've won the Brownlow. So it wasn't a good trade for him. Mate, the, uh, sorry, sorry. If, and please. John Petura was last seen heading for uh, the Northern Territory uh, <laughs> on sorry. a very fast horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Graham, uh, I think 78 or 79 uh, pre-season, uh, I believe that you had two coaches show up to... To coaches, could you talk us through that? Yeah, they were the good old days. See, we were ahead of our time. Uh, <laughs> all the other clubs only had one coach, and we yeah. had two, and we didn't actually have a ground to play on at that stage. It was either going to be Sydney or or uh, the Lake Oval, but uh, we were training it down at Como Park when uh, we had both of them turn up. Great times for the old Swannies. Yeah, so what, one of them was obviously sacked the year before, and then he showed up at uh, pre season well, the next year. Ricky Quaid was. Uh, appointed with the old guard and then John Rantel was appointed with the new crew and uh, Quaidy was very proud of uh, that particular period because they sacked him before the new season started and he said he's the only coach that's ever coached South and never lost a game. Yeah. So he turned up again at pre-season? <laughs> he did. Yeah. Graham, I was just going to ask you, we're, at Geelong we had Barry Round as our, as our ruckman coach and just... What a sit, tragic mistake oh, that yeah, is. Well, there wouldn't be enough beer yeah. in the bar <laughs> exactly. to uh, go around. Well, that's where I'm going with this story and uh, we used to sit around with Barry and ask him about the old South Melbourne stories. I mean, how did you find it going from uh, Victoria or over to South Melbourne and the environment, the atmosphere over there and... Actually, there's a very graphic story. Tommy Hafey was uh, a teetotaler. And Richmond had a fairly strong social culture, I sh I'll call it. And <laughs> after Monday night, you were, weren't allowed to have a beer, supposedly. Anyway, Tommy was pretty strict on this, so I've crossed to South Melbourne. The first week that I'm there, Ricky Quaid said to me, oh, we've got a bit of a get-together down at uh, the Yum Char. Uh, come down and uh, meet a few of the players. So I'd only been there five minutes. So I get down there and I've got a... This is on a Thursday night and everyone's having a beer, so I've got a beer sitting in front of me. And I look up coming through the doors and here's the coach, Graham John, walking towards him. And I thought, oh, Jesus, I've been here five minutes and I'm in trouble already. <laughs> it was only when he got a little closer he had a six-pack under his arm. <laughs> and I thought, this is the right place for me to be. <laughs>